Hello, I'm Emmy Johnson, and on behalf of the Austin Public Library, we thank you for joining us this evening to help us create a strategic plan for the future of our library spaces, programs, and services for the next five years. We are excited to share the work we have done so far in trying to understand the challenges and opportunities facing the Austin communities and solutions that we, as your library, can provide. The most important way we do this is by hearing from you. We want to know what would bring you to the library and keep you coming back. It's important that the library's plan includes what you value and what you want to experience in your community. So from the Austin Public Library team, we appreciate you getting involved and shaping the future of your libraries and helping us develop a plan to guide us forward. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for that, Emmy. I am Haley Parton. I'm gonna take over the presentation from here. I'm working on outreach for the planning process and I have been a lifelong lover of libraries. Uh, so I've had the pleasure of getting out into the community and talking with you all about what you see as a need broadly uh, that you may not think could be fulfilled by the library and specifically what you think the library can help bring to your community. Um, this process has a lot about getting people out of the traditional view of what you think a library can be. So we're getting really creative here. We're gonna be asking for your input and we want you to be thinking big picture. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and start our presentation. And before we dive in, I wanted to make sure that everyone has had a chance to join our polling session. You can participate online by scanning the code that's on the screen here, or you can enter in the URL that is in green, polev.com slash Austin Library Plan 806. That'll take you to an online portal where you can answer questions, or you can text in. So to start the session, you text Austin Library Plan 806 to 22333. Now that's gonna open up the session and from here on out, you don't have to do that again. So these directions will be really peppered in throughout the presentation in case people join in late. If you've already done this step, you don't need to do it again. And uh, Anais is going to drop the link in the chat to the poll everywhere. So if you would just wanna click that to join, feel free to do so there. So, now that we are thinking a little bit more broadly, getting creative here, I see a couple of answers coming in. We've got um, cleanliness, aesthetics, more event, easier access to information. Uh, I hope that this process will give you a little bit more information, but I also give you the tools to reach out in the future. Got computer lab. All of these are themes that we're going to be addressing later on. Uh, we hope that that'll play into more about what input you're gonna be giving us today. Um, so I'll give it just another couple of seconds, make sure everyone knows how to use the polling software, but also just kind of get us thinking about what the community wants to see. Hey, soundproof music and practice rooms. That's another one that uh, has come up in some of our conversations in the past. 3D printing, really cool, great. Um, so I want you all to take this question, what is the number one improvement that would bring you to your local library with you throughout the presentation. So as we talk about different opportunities, as we talk about things that we want you to be keeping an eye out for, remember, we're not constrained into a box. We just want you to think what's gonna get you there and what's gonna keep you coming back. So. Now that we're looking towards the future, I wanted to give you all a heads up about what we're gonna be talking about on this presentation. So we're gonna start just by giving you kind of a snapshot of what Austin's libraries look like today. And then we'll talk a little bit about the planning process and the activities that we've done so far in trying to develop this plan. We'll give you a summary of what we've heard from people through our various outreach that is ongoing. and. Then we'll distill all of what we've learned through our research and the input that we've heard from you all 
into a vision for what Austin's libraries could look like in the future. We'll keep that presentation portion as short as we can, and I'll tell you, I don't think that we'll necessarily use up all the time that we've reserved today, but we wanted to have a pretty healthy time reserved for the live polling, which is our main point of being here. We really want to hear from you all, so really encourage active participation and our Q&A discussion. So we'll be spending the bulk of our time on those activities here. Now, some features that are a little different you may not have seen before. We have a Q&A window as part of this webinar. So if you have questions, feel free to drop them in using your Q&A option there. If there's a simple question we can answer as we go, we'll do so. Um, but the more complex ones we'll bank up and answer during the Q&A session at the end of the presentation. And that'll just allow us to make sure that we get the right expert from the team and have that person answer the question to give you all the information that you're looking for. Um, we will also mark questions as they're answer answered in the chat. So you'll know if we've addressed it via text or live. And then once they have been answered, they will be visible to all attendees. So please, as always, just if you could be respectful and mindful of your language in this chat, there are um, etiquette flags in Zoom that will pull out profanity and the like. So um, one more feature that is a little bit unusual. Um, the chat in this webinar is actually to allow you to communicate directly with the hosts and panelists. That's going to be the folks on our outreach team working specifically for the comprehensive planning process. And then that'll be people who work at ACL or APL, pardon me, um, who may have a little bit more subject matter expertise on the specifics. So all of us are able to see the chat, but the rest of the attendees will not be able to. The raise hand function will be most useful during the Q&A session, and we'll go into more detail later. But just bear in mind that will come into play. We don't expect to really be stopping and talking during the presentation portion so much just so that we can get through it quickly and have everyone get into this rich discussion and polling. So with all of the housekeeping out of the way, let's dig into the fun stuff. So why are we here? Um, essentially, today, this is one of many opportunities that you as community members have to get involved in this planning process. So we're looking at a comprehensive view of the future of the Austin Public Library System. That includes different strategies and programs to you know, provide activities and partnerships and resources to the community, as well as the actual facilities, which includes all of the APL spaces throughout the city. So this lovely picture that you see right here is the Central Library, many of you are already familiar, but the Austin Public Library System actually has quite a few more facilities than just the Central Library. There are 20 branches spread out throughout the city and they're shown on blue here. Um, there's the Austin History Center, which is also part of the Austin Public Library system and that's closer to the downtown area. And then in the area shown in green here, there are mobile services that will come out into the community to reach people who might not have a branch right down the street. Um, that includes the bookmobile, the book trike, and different ways that people from the APL staff can get out and bring books and resources to people where they are already gathered. Now, many of you have probably been to or seen our world-class central library. This is an award-winning library. It is very modern. It is right in the heart of downtown, and it has all of the features that we're looking at right now to try to bring into the different branches. There are lots of space for people to hang out, hold events. Um, there are programs and activities that are reg regularly scheduled there. They have the most up-to-date technology and, of course, as many books as you can imagine. Now, comparatively, the branches are pretty small, actually. So out of all the 20 branches, you could fit them almost entirely within the one central library. So you see there's, there's not a lot of space across the city. And the last library branch that was newly constructed was in 2010. So our population has already grown by 20% since then. We already have some catch up to do. 
And we're looking towards the future and the growth that we expect and want to take that into consideration as we're doing this process. Now, those small branches are really well maintained and they have great programs and services, but they're pretty constrained and limited by that size component. Uh, we have a lot of things where people are packed into small rooms. Maybe the lighting isn't ideal for different creative opportunities, things like that. Um, so these photos here show you some of the spaces inside of our branches that you can see on the ground today. So that leads us in, considering all of that uh, summary of what is currently on the ground. The purpose of the comprehensive plan here is to really put together a vision that has goals for the kinds of services and spaces that you and your neighbors would want to see in the branch libraries across Austin. That includes a strategic plan, which is focusing more on goals, programs, partnerships, activities uh, that also aligns with a facilities plan that are kind of two parallel components of the comprehensive plan. The facilities plan is looking at upgrades to different branches, possible renovations, expansions, or even relocations. Now, all of this is happening with a lens towards providing community resources. So we're really aiming to strengthen the library's role as a partner across the city with the city of Austin and all of our service organizations as a key provider and role in addressing community issues. So the process, how are we going to accomplish those things? Uh, we have broken out into roughly three phases. So our first step is to evaluate the needs and opportunities. We are looking closely at APLs, materials, and that includes books, ebooks, audiobooks, um, the programs, spaces, and how the community is using them right now. Also focusing on getting community input, we're getting out into the community through several different surveys that include library staff, different service providers, um, partners throughout the community, getting pop-up events out there. And we have used everything that we learned in that phase, which stretched about from February to the end of the summer. We've distilled everything that we learned through that research and input into some ideas for strategies that might help address these needs. So right now, fall and winter through the end of this year, we're developing those goals and we're identifying possibilities that might help upgrade those spaces. This phase, we started with a strategic visioning workshop where we invited partners from throughout the community to come and really dive deep with us on different concepts and ideas that might improve the local libraries. We're currently doing community pop-ups, which I'll explain more in just a second here. And right now, we are having our virtual community conversation. So what we learn from you all today and from the rest of the community throughout the rest of the year is going to feed into the recommendations that we'll develop for the long range plan. Now, that can include some short term recommendations that you might be able to see put in place over the next five years or so. But then it will also include some more long term ideas that will probably take up to 15 years to see. But starting now and looking before we need it is going to help us make that uh, transition much more smoothly. So our engagement to date, this is my personal favorite part of this process, if you're uh, surprised to hear me say that as the community outreach person here. Um, we had a lot of fun getting out into the community and talking with people about what excites them and what they really would want to see in the future. And we heard from over 5,000 people so far. Um, we had a community survey that we promoted in all of the branches and using Austin Public Library's social media and uh, information that we've collected. But at the same time, we went out into the community at these pop-up events that were spread out geographically. And it was really geared towards hearing from people who might not be keyed in to what the library is doing and might not be aware of what's happening. So we were able to get a good mix of library users and non-users in that survey. We also heard from over 400 APL staff members in all kinds of roles to get their perspective on what they see as the most common need. 
and kind of balancing what the community sees with what the people who are on the ground are seeing right now. And then we've worked with over 70 partners and that number is growing daily. These are folks representing organizations that have all kinds of diverse perspectives on needs across our community, including social service providers, different folks in the creative community, neighborhood organizations, advocacy groups, you name it. Um, we sat down and had interviews with people to get some more detailed information on what their specific needs would be. And then we also worked with them to help distribute information to greater groups in the community. Um, all of that was very helpful in getting the input that has led up to what we're going to be talking about today. And now that we have some information, we are back out in the community with those pop-up events. We are here tonight, of course. Um, don't feel like you have to memorize all the pop-up events that are being shown on the screen right now. I just wanted to give you a little look ahead. We've completed a couple and there will be more coming up over the next couple of weeks on um, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can see what these events are and we'll make sure that there is um, a link dropped into the chat where you can just quickly reference that. So we hope either you or some of your neighbors and friends may join us at these events that are coming up. So what has all of this feedback and engagement shown us? Some of the main points that we've heard from people, when we ask generally what people love about where they live, we know Austin's a wonderful place, and uh, we heard from almost 4,000 respondents, a lot of conversation about the neighborhoods, the neighbors, the community feel. Uh, the library came up in a lot of the answers here, but also parks and the natural aesthetics and all of the open spaces that we have in Austin were something that people really value. So we're hoping to take these themes however we can and incorporate them into the plan here. Now, of course, even the best place has some drawbacks. So even though Austin tends to love its community, we know that there are some challenges facing our uh, population. So when we asked people what they would change about where they live, we heard a lot about traffic and transportation needs. We've heard about costs and housing challenges, including the issues faced by the unhoused community. And you know, for some reason, a uh, few people said that they don't like the tacos, and I disagree with that. So I just, I don't know why the tacos uh, showed up in this, but I, I still get a kick out of it. Um, when we asked people what they like about the APL location they visit the most, we got a lot of feedback about how friendly the staff is, about the selection, a broad selection of books. There are convenient locations in different areas and generally the cleanliness and welcoming spaces that they have for people to meet in. And this is one of my favorite questions, but it actually is, it can be kind of tricky to read that, um, that chart. But what I take away from this, when we asked communities how their community benefits from having a library, People listed every single option we gave them. People are seeing the different value that APL brings in a variety of different areas. Now, the benefits that floated to the top were promotion of lifelong learning, materials for reading and entertainment, providing access to technology, and resources for language and literacy skills. But as you can see, you know, the, the ones that are behind it aren't very far behind. So we want to make sure Austin Public Library stays considered as a valuable asset to the community. So everything that we've discussed, we've kind of distilled down into these five focus areas. So big picture, what we heard from you all is that Austin's libraries should be a place for lifelong learning, social interaction, arts and culture, innovation, and community resilience. And when we talk about community resilience, that can be interpreted in a lot of different ways. It can be what role does the library have in giving the community affordable access to resources that can help them bounce back from different crises. It can also be the resilience of the library and how are we considering sustainability and you know environmental concerns or public health issues as we plan ahead. So 
those big picture ideas are going to follow us into the next section. You'll see how they show up in different ways. But we will, before diving in, do one more quick little poll. So if you haven't already, please go ahead and enroll in our polling session. If you've joined late, you can join by scanning this code, entering that URL into your browser, or texting our keyword, Austin Library Plan 806 to 22333. Um, the directions will be on the next several pages, so you'll still be able to see them, don't worry. Um, and remember, if you have trouble participating in any of our polls, please do chat with us, but there are other ways to share your input through Speak Up Austin and um, publicinput.com is another survey we have available. So now, Broadly, what do you think? Based on the input and the summaries that we've given you, do you think that we heard you right? Do you think that we interpreted your commentary the way that you intended to give it? Seeing some more come through. Okay. Well, I'm hoping that this is staying at 100% because everybody's answering, oh, I jinxed it, but at least it was still pretty close. Um, okay, well, I'll go ahead and move on. Um, until we get to the next polling question, you can still text the letter that corresponds here if you didn't get a chance to weigh in and online, that question will still remain for you until we open up a new one. So I'm glad to see that it looks like people agree with the way that we've interpreted your input because that means that maybe our vision here is what you would like to see. So I'm gonna stop here for a second. I'll mute myself, turn off my camera, and we just have a short three minute video that shows what our vision for the future of Austin's libraries is. <laughs>
Okay, so that was just kind of an overview of some of the ideas that we have for spaces, programs, activities that might be useful to bring out into the libraries across the city. Um, I want everyone to be thinking about some of the elements that you saw in there that you would like to see at your library. So um, as we start our polling session, and again, here we go, like a, like a broken record, I'm going to show you these directions one more time in case people have just now joined. So we're going to start our polling session, and this is all about you choosing the images that you like. If something catches your eye and it looks like something that you would want to see at your local branch library, click the image if you're participating online, or if you haven't yet, join the session by text and start texting the letter of each photo you like to 22333. You can send as many messages as you'd like. We're gonna scroll through these so that you have the images large on your screen. You can text as many letters as you'd like. Um, you can text them separately or in one string, that is a-okay, but we'll go ahead and get started. So when we think about places to work together and create, there are a lot of different ways that, that can look. You can go ahead and start texting in if you're texting or answering online. Um, a for this image right here, if you like that one, or B for this one, um, you don't have to choose between them. You can choose both if you like them both and be thinking about why as we go through. Here we have another different kind of concept of spaces that you might see to work and create. Okay. Go to the next ones. More places to work and create, got different vibes in terms of the kind of materials that are around you, the kind of lighting, the kind of technology. Okay, so now that we have seen the places to work together and create, which images catch your eye? Oh, okay, so we're seeing some spread out for different reasons. We've got E, that one that had a lot of the yarn and a loom and different uh, creative materials is kind of winning out, but you've also got the big, bright collaborative space that we saw on the very first slide and another was kind of in between with some maker materials, but um, some more open space there. So as we go into this next question, I want you all to tell me why those are the ones that you like. And so in a couple of words here, share a few words that describe what you like about the pictures you chose. And don't feel like you have to, um, don't feel like you have to send them all in one message. You can send multiple messages. It can be about the way that it looks, or it can be about what's in the space. You name it. Um, so yeah, we've got colorful and bright, got warm. Oh, wow, okay, a lot came in at the same time. Yeah, lots of colorful, the open, lighting, fun. Yeah, the fun vibe of different uh, areas. Very nice. Okay, I see, it seems like fun is going to be the winner here on the word that we want to uh, take from those images. I'll give it another just couple seconds. It seems like we have more coming in and then we'll move to our next set. That open, that one's coming up. That's a, that's a good one too. Okay, wonderful. So I'm gonna go ahead and move on. You can still participate. If more comes to mind later, the same information can be shared on publicinput.com and Speak Up Austin. So now we're gonna go into a new session. So the same thing we did with spaces to make and create and work together, we're gonna to do with spaces to learn new skills and share arts and culture. So you can go ahead and start texting in the letters of the images that catch your eye or answering online. 
one. We'll keep going. A couple more different types of technology in these rooms, different layouts of the spaces, purposes. A little more creative spaces. We've got some hands-on activities and bringing in music to uh, the, the spaces and having some areas where art can be displayed. I'll give it a second. And let's see what the results are. So, okay. So the gallery space is one of the, the higher ones. And then the, the um, cooking demonstration space is another higher ranking. Very interesting. The other ones that look pretty high up there are um, B was the space that had a, just a big room for people to bring their own art supplies. It was knitting in that photo. And then G is the music um, performance space. So lots of different preferences here. So again, I want y'all to let me know why. What are the things that you like about the ones that you chose? Warm, again, also life skills definitely the cooking one in particular i'm sure could all use a little bit of guidance there lots of crafts sharing experiences you know it's interesting whenever all the um oh this is the first time we see one get larger than the others so as more people text in with the same words that the word grows um we're getting a lot of variety a lot of different words that are being shared the same amount of time. Diverse skills, learning, really great. Okay. So we'll keep this one open. Again, if you want to keep texting in words that come to mind. However, um, we're going to move on to the next images polling thing in just about 30 more seconds. All of this input is really helpful. We'll go ahead. And this one is gonna be our final set of images for everyone to weigh in on. So we're looking at places to hang out, play and discover. So again, thinking about the kind of spaces that you're in, the, the areas people have to spend time as well as the activities. Got a couple of very different options on this page. Go to the next one. All right. So let's see what's winning out. Okay. So we've got the image that had a really um bright and playful playscape in it. That one is taking the lead right now, but what's tied, the, the two that I felt were so, uh, such interesting comparisons on the same slide, the one where people are sitting and doing their work quietly versus a very interactive uh, dinosaur STEM kind of activity. So really interesting to see those all coming out towards the top. The VR virtual reality headset is another one that came to the top. Very cool. And same deal. I think you all probably know the game by now. If you'll tell me next why you chose those images. They're fun. Yeah, especially that uh, big fun playscape. I, that would be the word I would use too. Mm -hmm. Learning opportunities, definitely. <laughs> dinosaur. That was maybe my favorite. All right. Calm, quiet. So that's kind of interesting. And, and both can be true, right? We've got a lot of people talking about interactive, playful, but then also having some calm and quiet spaces to spend your time. Great. 
All right. Well, okay. So we're getting some really good input here. Again, um, there will still be opportunities for you to share these thoughts after this meeting today, but I will move to the next slide, um, give you a little bit more information before we take a break here. All right. So we've gotten some great participation so far, and we hope to get more over the next coming weeks. And I'm going to tell you what we plan to do with that. So this December, as we are collecting additional input, again, we have more pop-up events. Um, we have a survey on publicinput.com, and we have a survey on Speak Up Austin. And both of those, I believe, are already in the chat. Um, if they're not, they will be in just a moment. And we'll take everything from that, incorporate it into these ideas that we've already started working on, and that's going to become our draft recommendations for the comprehensive plan, which is going to take uh, shape in early 2023. So now we're going to take a brief, brief break, and then we will come back in just a couple of minutes for the um, Q&A session. So if y'all will be thinking about what you'd like to ask and what you'd like to talk about in the Q&A session, uh, I think that we can probably do this as a short break. Let's get back together here at 645. And in the meantime, if you have a chance, you can go ahead and answer our demographic questions online. We have them banked together, so it's a little easier to flow through them. So if you're participating by text, we'll give you an alternative afterward. But um, these can all be answered online. Just let us know that we're reaching a diverse group of people in the community. Thanks.
All right. We are back. Thank you for staying with us over this time. So we hope we'll look at the demographics questions a little bit more, and those will be on during the Q&A discussion. So if you didn't get a chance, don't worry. They are not going to close on you. Um, so when we start this Q&A discussion, as a note, um, we'll read the questions aloud. So if there's something that you just want to privately ask us, you can send that in the chat or mark it as private at the beginning of your question. We will answer you one on one. But if you are OK with the question being shared for the benefit of the group, please you know, go ahead and drop your questions in the Q&A window. You're welcome to send them in the chat, uh, or you can click that raise hand button that we talked about earlier, and we'll get a sense for people who have questions, and we'll be able to unmute you briefly to talk with us. So we've got our team of experts here ready at the helm. Does anybody have uh, anything they'd like to share? If you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, we are monitoring those comments too. So feel free to drop them in those comments. They'll make it over here to our team. Got crickets. Should we ask each other questions? Break the ice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jill, what's your biggest <laughs> question that's burning on your mind? <laughs> Well, I, um, uh, for those who don't know, I'm Jill Ayers. I'm part of the consultant team that's working with the library on this project. And it is uh, absolutely an honor to be working with your library and to learn more about the Austin community. Um, I have questions for, let's see, I'm gonna add, well, let's start with Emmy. Emmy, which of those, uh, you know, a lot of the image that Haley showed us actually were of Austin uh, the central library there. And one of the things we've been talking about a lot is how do we bring more of those um, services, spaces, programs, materials out into the branches? Is there one of those that you particularly are excited to, to share with more than just the downtown area? Oh, so many. <laughs> so as, as we saw, we try to take a lot of that, what we see at Central, out into our branches, and it's tight. Um, but that didn't, that doesn't really stop us, right? So, so you can see us like packed in like sardines. Our story times are very crowded um, because we continue to believe that 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 is what the community has asked for. So we're going to find a way. It certainly um, we scale it. Uh, of course, or we do it differently to adjust for the, the constraints there. But, um, you know, exhibits, I, I think if we had the space to, to show the work of students, of, of our partners, um, that is a huge draw into our libraries for the kids to bring their families to show their work, right? So, yeah, more walls, larger space <laughs> open. <laughs> we can hang them from the ceiling. <laughs> yep, right? absolutely. You know, that brings up another point about the partnerships in the community. So I know that there are a lot of things that APL can address directly, but there are a lot of things that I know that the APL team wants to be able to contribute to solving, but there just are only so many resources and different people have different expertise. So um, what are some of the partnerships that are really important right now? And what are some of the areas where you might want to form new partnerships? I can start and, and the others can chime in. So um, we have started to really develop out our partnership with workforce development really trying to fill the skill gaps um, in our local economy. Uh, we do focus on creatives. This is that kind of um, atmosphere here in Austin. So I know their creatives are always looking for spaces to produce and show their work, right? Um, we also have a strong technology um, presence. So we, 
engage with Google, we engage with um, SkillPoint, we engage with a lot of industries, entrepreneurs, especially uh, in the STEM and computer area. And hopefully that reaches our teens. That's one of our harder uh, populations to, to engage and then stay engaged, right? Because that, that's kind of emerging stuff all the time. Um, so yeah, I think we, we are working on our priorities that um, really reflect our community and our businesses around the area. So we're kind of super localized there. Um, I'll uh, also chime in. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Baylor Johnson. I am the Marketing and Public Information Program Manager at APL. Um, and say, yeah, Emmy, I, I think did a great job of talking about some of the partnerships that exist, some opportunities that we know uh, that we have to um, continue to work with other institutions in the Austin community. But I'll say that one thing that, um, you know, the library really one of our biggest value adds to any uh, partnership is our spaces. We do just have a footprint in the community. And a lot of times, a lot of these services, a lot of these organizations, uh, a lot of these groups that um, we can and do partner with, what they really just need is a space for what it is they do to happen. Um, and as Haley said um, at the uh, beginning of this presentation, uh, a lot of um, what we are hoping to do through this strategic plan is look at what kinds of new spaces uh, we need to create um, and our partnerships and the, the programs and services that we provide in collaboration with them is certainly something that is on our minds as we're thinking about what those spaces can be. You know, um, on that point, Baylor, one of the things that we looked at in our analysis of Austin Public Library and your footprint in the community right now is that even though you're short on space, particularly in a lot of your branches that are very small, where they're located is actually very effective for providing access to people. We did um, some mapping analysis of, of where people live and the branches they use, and we really found very few parts of Austin, if at all, where there was like a, a total gap in access to your libraries. Um, people are getting there, they're using them, uh, they very much appreciate you. And then, of course, as Haley pointed out earlier, you've got those mobile services that make sure you're getting out, you know, to every part of the community and, and beyond. Um, I do want to give a shout out to John Daniels, who is here. He is uh, the head of facilities for Austin Public Library, and he and his team are a big part of the reason why your branches look great. Um, they truly are. I I, um, part of my job is I get to visit libraries all over the country and I, I can't say this all the time, but truly like you walk in they're they're clean. Um, you know, they, they look great. The carpet looks great. The lights are nice. They're not leaking. So um, you've got a great, great team there. Uh, kudos, John. <laughs> He's a man of few words, a lot of action. I will say uh, we did get a question, a comment through Facebook to provide library cards to the homeless. And I have to say the struggles of unhoused communities have come up so often in this planning process. And one of our events, I think it actually is this coming Saturday, is for um, the Sunrise Homeless Navigation Center. And that is a group that we see it in the libraries currently and we hear it from people you know, if, if you don't necessarily have an address, it's hard to get access to services. So that is something that's very much being taken into account. Um, there will be staff available to help connect you with those resources if you are a person who's interested in that and you're able to join us at the Sunrise um, Navigation Center. So I wanted to note that, please, if you are struggling to get a library card right now, uh, don't don't hesitate to reach out and, and talk to someone who's here or um, at any of your local branches. Okay. Well, is there anything else? If uh, I'm not seeing a lot of questions pouring in, I hope that's because we answered them. Uh, <laughs> but if not, is there anything we didn't cover from a team's per perspective that y'all wanna make sure that the community hears tonight? 
Okay. It sounds silence I take as satisfaction. That is uh what I'm I'm reading here. So um thank you again to everyone who joined us through Zoom, YouTube, Facebook. And if you know of folks in your community who might be interested in getting involved, please do share the information with them. Uh, we'll be sharing on social and through the APL website and different means to let you know how you can get involved. But this is not your only chance and it is not the only chance for people in your network. So please help us get the word out. And uh, cheers to a bright future for the Austin Public Library System. So thank you all for being a part of that. Thank you so much, Haley and team. It's been exciting. We look forward to engaging more. And I think this continues. I mean, we're gonna hear from community all through the early part of next year, right? Is that is that something we can do? Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Take care. Thank you. Bye.